The last time I went to CeCe's house, beautiful home, up in the hills, windows like I have, and overlooking the Hollywood Hills. And, and people started finding out that when the rainbow closed at two, everybody just went to CeCe DeVille's house. And I went there one time and there was all these people there and booze and and people are partying. And I didn't see CeCe, I don't know where the fuck he was. I know where he was. He was in the back room with an ounce of cocaine. I'm sure he'd admit it. And I was walking in the door and some guy was walking out the door holding a 1959 Les Paul. And I was like, holy shit, that's a, that's a $200,000 guitar. Because CeCe had like 50 guitars around the room. And I'm like, hey, hey, what are you doing, dude? Oh, CC told me I could have it. And I said, no, you can't. And he's like, what? I said, no. I said, no, no, give me the guitar. No, CC said, I said, dude, that's a 59 Les Paul. It's worth over $100,000. Now it's worth probably $800,000. And I said, you're not taking that guitar. And we got into it. Like, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to, I'm a black belt. Everybody knows that. I studied in Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't doing one of these silly, you know, 12 year olds. I, I see 12 year olds who go, my son just got his black belt. I'm like, <laughs> really? He's a black belt. He knows 115 katas. I ain't buying it. You know, you could buy a black belt, but I went to Korea every year. The band knows every year after the tour, I would go to Korea and spend 10 days with Master Kim, who was the eighth degree black belt for the National Quiet National Quad Federation. And he failed me three times. I'm embarrassed. I flew all the way to Korea, studied, did my test. He goes, Don, you're not ready. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, I just didn't. My problem was cardiovascular. I just mm -hmm. couldn't keep going. And of course, when you go to those schools, you got people from Sweden, Germany, Austria, and they all want to be Bruce Lee. So I'm sparring against them. But they're like, I'm going to kill you. You know, you're not supposed to do that. You're just supposed to fight and spar and you tap out. So anyway, I did that for years. And and this, this punk ass kid was like, you know, get the hell out of my way. Or I'll kick your ass. And I said, bring it. You're not taking that guitar. And I, it was like this, he grabbed it. I grabbed the neck, he grabbed the neck, he grabbed the neck. And I just said to him, dude, you don't know who I am. You better let go of that guitar or you're gonna be on the ground. And I'm gonna have you in a chokehold. So I took the guitar, put it in the trunk of my car, drove it home, didn't see CC for two weeks. And I kept trying to call him. And I finally got a hold of him. And I said, uh, Cece, by the way, I've got your 59 Les Paul Deluxe. What? You know what was missing? <laughs> I go, yeah, you were, you were high on blow and you supposedly gave it to him. And I'm not, and I'm, I've got it. You know, we're talking about a yeah. hundred dollar guitar. It's in my, it's in my house. So, and I was playing it. Great guitar. And I said, I'll come by and drop it off. And that's what happens when you're a drug addict. You know, you just, you're just not thinking clearly. And I met him when he bought the house. This is beautiful mansion. And then two years later, it looked like a goddamn crack house. Mm -hmm. It's all over the garbage, trash, beer cans, garbage. And I've learned that from Cece going to his house. People have no respect. They don't care. No. They show up in the rainbow. They're drunk. Cece de Ville had called his mate, and they were trashing his house. I mean, it was trashed. Two years later, we went on tour of Poison. Cece got clean. He was running two miles a day. He looked mm -hmm. great, played great. He was all fit, and he, and he kicked it, and I, God bless Cece for beating the demon. Turning it around. Yeah. But I'll yeah. never forget that, that punk-ass kid going, CC said I could have this. Yeah, I thought he was going to die. 
Yeah. And you remember he the the fam, band called, kicked him out for a year. They brought in Richie Cotson. I remember that. And, mm -hmm. You know, because CC was just gone. And yeah. then I had to laugh. I said, Oh, so Richie Cotson happens to be on tour right now because I'm talking to the agent. And I'm thinking of all the women in the world. Richie Cotson was a nobody. He joins Poison and he ends up screwing Ricky Rocket's wife. Of all the women, you don't screw the drummer's wife. <laughs> and, of course, and of course, he got fired. <laughs> Bad move. I'm like, dude, there's a million women out there. You don't screw the drummer's wife. Was, was it worth it is the question. Was yeah. it worth it? I don't think so. I don't think so. The one tour, one freaking tour. <laughs> and I thought, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> Not all these women and you're in a band with poison and you're banging, you know, Ricky Rocket's wife like, oh, my God. Not Some a people good are just stupid. Thanks for watching. If you want to catch this episode right now unedited, become a member right here on YouTube. As always, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, and click on the box right here for our next episode. We'll see you later.